Hello everyone, I'm bringing you a video today covering a topic which I don't often discuss on the channel and that is my firearms that I use as part of my reenacting kit. So this might be deactivated firearms in some, some instances, in other instances I have airsoft replicas uh, where appropriate and in this case we're looking at an airsoft replica. Now as the title of the video uh, states, this is supposed to be an XM16E1 or a replica of an XM16E1. Now, the problem with this, there are gas blowback airsoft XM16A1s available, but they're very expensive. I consider them to be quite expensive. It's something I may invest in in the future, but for the moment it's something that I don't have funds to invest in. So I was looking for a more affordable alternative. And as far as I'm aware, they just aren't really available as deactivated uh, firearms at all. M16A1s do turn up, but they are again quite expensive. Uh, but I'm after an XM16E1, so that doesn't help me. Now the XM16E1 is the experimentally initial Army, US Army issue version, US Army specification version of the M16. Of course it was initially adopted by the US Air Force. The XM16E1 is the modified design which met the Army specifications, had a forward assist, and that's the primary difference really is the, is the inclusion of the forward assist. It has early features such as a partial fence so-called on the receiver and obviously the three-prong flash hider. Uh, which differentiates it from an M16A1. And in that regard, there aren't really, uh, unless you go for an expensive gas blowback ever, airsoft version, there aren't really many options out there. What I've found is the old classic army, what they refer to as an M15A1, which I assume is to get around licensing. The markings on the receiver, as we'll see, are a bit spurious. That could do something about that. My intention with this is it's a relatively cheap uh, electric airsoft gun and the intention is to modify this and improve it so that it makes a good makes for a good facsimile a good uh, replica of an XM16E1. It won't be absolutely perfect of course but it should be a lot closer when I'm finished with it than it is now. Uh, pick this up second hand uh, for a very good price well, for a pretty good price it's a little bit battered but for what I want to do with it it's absolutely spot on and as I say once I've finished doing everything I want to do to it it should look quite good it'll be a fairly good uh, replica of an XM16E1. I've already done a few little bits and pieces to it which we'll talk about in the video in the main part of the video and there'll be a part two to this looking at it once I've finished with it as well to show you what it looks like after I've done everything I want to do. So we'll get into the main part of the video now and have a look at this with a few small modifications but otherwise basically as it arrived with me. So this is an example of the classic army M15A1 as they refer to it and it's I think these have been out of production for several years. It's essentially uh, an attempt at reproducing an airsoft, electric airsoft version of an XM16E1. It does have various issues, as most uh, attempts at recreating the XM16E1 have, at least in electric airsoft form. Uh, there are gas blowback versions which are pretty good at replicas, but I can't afford one of those at the moment and so I'm taking this as the basis of making something that's a, a relatively good stand-in. I've done various bits to this already, small uh, fixes and small replacement items fitted which I'll talk about as we look at this in more detail. So we'll start at the muzzle first of all. I've fitted a replacement three-prong flash hider here, uh, the one that comes with the, the classic army uh, gun or as it as it uh, as it comes that it comes with an A1 flash hider or three prong. It isn't quite the right shape, so I fitted this example. I forget which manufacturer uh, this is. It's one I just had around. Uh, this is originally intended to fit with a grub screw, so there's a hole for a grub screw here. Really not necessary, and of course not accurate. So I'll be filling in that hole with some black Miller putt going forward. Uh, really, the three prong flash hider should finish with this last larger ring here. This includes another ring, another smaller ring behind, and this basically replicates the look of the split washer that would sit behind the flash hider to allow you to tighten it down and, and get it to be secure on a real uh, XM16E1. So that I'm not too bothered about. It just sort of replicates the look of having that split washer sat behind the muzzle device. The barrel profile isn't terrible and relatively happy with that. Some of the uh, sort of thinner barreled uh, replicas out there, uh, electric airsoft guns have a, a ridged effect on here which goes beyond what you see on originals. Uh, some original barrels did have sort of a slightly ridged effect from where they've been turned uh, but the ones on electric airsoft guns, I think particularly from ENC, uh, have a very uh, almost a ribbed effect to them which is not correct so I'm happy with the profile of this. 
The front sight, uh, this will need a little bit of work potentially. I might remove these ribs from here and respray it. I'm not sure whether I'm going to bother with that or not as yet. Uh, but it, otherwise, not too bad. Obviously, the little pin here holding the gas tube in place and the pins holding it onto the barrel. This extra piece here, you can see this, this raised section at the front. That's not really correct, so I may look at reprofiling that possibly. But again, that's slightly more involved, so I may not get that done as part of this initial work I'm doing. That might be something for the future, uh, but we'll see. Uh, obviously, you'll see what I have done when we look at this in part two. One thing I have done here, this when I got it, was missing the front sling swivel, so I fitted a replacement. This is just an airsoft, off another airsoft uh, gun I have. Uh, so just fitted a replacement sling swivel there, pinned that in place. The handguards, uh, I will be removing the tape from these and cleaning them up in the first instance and probably be replacing these with something a bit better. These don't have the metal heat shield inside them, so I'll probably be replacing those uh, as part of this whole process. One thing that's nice here, you do have the correct parallel uh, retainer ring at the back here. These are tapered on the A2 version, some of the late uh, late uh, sort of 90, late 1960s, early 1970s carbines, but this is the nice flat uh, retainer ring for the handguards at the back there. Uh, I think I'm just running through this with what I'm going to do and what I've already done, so I'll just do that uh, as we move along the, uh, the rifle. It's probably the easiest way of doing it, it's just talking about everything I need to do and have done as we move along. We need to replace the dust cover, that's something I will be doing. Uh, that needs to be replaced with an A1 version. This large uh, protuberance here for where the, the latch fits in is an A2 uh, feature. It should be just a little flat metal plate there, a little oblong plate. Uh, the same sort of gauge steel as the rest of the dust cover is made from. So I will be uh, replacing that with an A1 type dust cover. Just open open that there. We have the fake bolt inside here, which is, as you can see, is, is painted, spray painted silver, sort of replicate the uh, chrome bolts found on early XM16E1s. This can be improved. There should be two little holes in this depression here. The shape of this is, of course, not perfect. It has to fit over the inner workings of the electric airsoft gun. So from that point of view, this is not correct, but it can be improved. And I will probably just take this back to bare aluminium as you can see, it's worn here, so the, the simplest way of dealing with that is to just take the paint off and have this bare aluminium, which will fairly accurately replicate the look of the chrome bolts that we used in these early on. You can see here that the latch on this dust cover is pretty good. That's better than a lot of airsoft guns in the way this functions is a lot closer to a real uh, M16 dust cover, but the, uh, the outside look of this is not correct. This, of course, has the, looking at the receiver, the lower receiver, we have the correct partial fence, quote unquote. This retains the pin uh, here, so there's a little detent inside here that retains the takedown pin at the front here. That's a nice feature of this, is the pins operate correctly. And the profile and everything around the front of the trigger grip, uh, the profile and everything around the front of the trigger guard and everything here is correct, around the magazine well, rather. This is nice, nicely replicated, so that's a nice feature of this, all the shape here is correct. Some of these you see, uh, Sima for example, Sima, uh, they have cut down the fence not correctly. It actually stops right at the edge of this raised section here. So this is the sort of correct profile where it stops roughly halfway, well down the midline of the magazine release button there. That's basically the correct profile. The little hole here is correct as well. So that's all quite nice and looks quite good. I've had to remove some markings, some false, some, some made up markings from the magazine well here and there's more to remove which we'll talk about in just a moment. The magazine release catch obviously is this was missing as well so I've replaced this with one off a, a SEMA or SIMA I'm not sure of the pronunciation of that but a, a SEMA or SIMA M16 uh, which works fine. That little screw in the middle obviously these didn't attach with the screw in the first plate in on the original M16. Uh, this is just a solid little piece so I'll fill in the center of that with some milliput once this is fully reassembled. Easy enough to dig out if I ever wanted to remove it again, but it will improve the look of the magazine release catch. Obviously, I've removed some markings there. There are more markings to remove here. I need to remove Classic Army, obviously. The uh, selector markings on the side of the receiver here, uh, the, the dual markings are obviously on the other side as well. This is an A2 feature, as I remember, so these need to be removed. They certainly weren't on the M16E1. I don't think they were on late production M16A1s either. So these need to be removed and obviously Classic Army needs to be removed from there as well, which means I will need to refinish the receiver, but that's not a problem. This just needs a little bit more flatting down before I repaint there. 
and as I say I'll do the same as I've done here with these markings. They're not particularly deeply etched in so that won't be too big of a job to do. The magazine itself is a, a SEMA magazine that I've gutted so I've just taken the innards out of that and put a real uh, base plate in, not marked or anything but just an original base plate there which for reenacting purposes makes a uh, slightly better outward look of this particularly if you have it propped up you don't have the uh, uh, obviously the little tooth wheel in the bottom there and everything so it just looks a little bit more uh, accurate from that point of view so we have that there and it means there's no mucking about to make anything compatible with the the airsoft receiver and as i say they aren't expensive to pick up for magazines uh, the 20 round magazines for these otherwise the receiver is quite nice the rear sight uh, the dial there and everything is is quite well done the uh, the forward assist has a strange sort of profile to the grooves on the back. I do have another one of these I could fit, so I may well swap that out to something that has a slightly better profile on the back. The pistol grip on these is always a, a compromise because it has to contain the motor, so it's a bit wider, not quite the right shape, but overall not bad. I have a replacement pistol grip, uh, which I plan to fit, which is an airsoft pistol grip. It's not a real one, but my intention would be to remove the base plate and have a piece of plastic card down inside black plastic card hiding the way this attaches and then just fill in this front bit here with black milliput maybe remove the rear screw hole so that it could be used with a motor with this pistol grip fitted but with the other pistol grip fitted it will look more appropriate for reenacting it will be propped up and so forth and it will have a hollow pistol grip as it should do as, as M real m16s do moving right to the back of the receiver here we have the charging handle the cocking handle which i've actually taken from a SEMA example and replaced and the reason for that was that this the retaining clip here was broken on the one that this came with so I've replaced uh, replaced that uh, entirely and that's worked fine I just uh, had to muck about with the internals a bit I will have to remove this again in order to refinish the, the receiver so I'll have to work on that again at some point the back profile here is the correct um, A1, XM16, E1 profile. One thing you find with quite a lot of electric airsoft guns is that the rear profile here, certainly the SIMA, SEMA examples where they've tried to make an XM16, E1 look with the cut down fence and everything, re removing part of the fence on the side of the receiver here, is that they have the A2 profile at the rear here, which is a strengthened section at the back of the lower receiver, which is incorrect and a real shame. If they got that right, it would be pretty good it would be pretty close apart from the fence not being quite the right shape and this not being the right shape it would be closer but that's just a, an issue there obviously the thing with airsoft guns is a lot of them are being made for airsofters who are not that picky about the details the historic details as long as it overall looks pretty good they're not going to be too bothered but it is possible to improve them as i'm trying to do here uh, as a stand-in for reenacting purposes so that's the the side here we'll move right to the rear now and talk a bit more about the butt this is a common issue with many uh, airsoft M16s, and particularly where they're trying to backdate them to Vietnam era, is this has a very late A1 stock. So I believe it was 73, they standardized on the type of stock where you have a fixed uh, sling swivel at the rear here, rather than a, a pivoting sling swivel. So the type D is the stock you want for Vietnam use basically all the way through, including the initial issues of the M16A1, along with the XM16E1. You need the pivoting sling swivel at the rear, the Type D stock. What they have done with this is they've tried to replicate the correct butt pad, butt plate. And this is actually a piece that just clips in. The later A1 uh, butt that has this fixed sling swivel actually has two screws and a trap door in the butt plate. It's a different design of butt plate, which you see very commonly. They're very easy to get hold of for electric airsoft guns. Uh, but they have tried with this to replicate the, the XM16E1 and early M16A1 butt plate. I will probably replace, replace this with a SIMA stock, which I will modify and fit a proper sling swivel to it, the correct type of sling swivel. And again, that will overall improve the look of this. I'll flip it over now and have a look at the other side. We'll talk mainly about the receiver here because that's the main point of interest looking at this other side here. Features I like on this, again, the profile is correct. You can see here the, the profile here. On the A2 uh, lower receiver, this is all beefed up around here. So the thicker section of metal here that's sort of recessed in actually comes round and is, is larger and, and reinforces that rear part of the uh, lower receiver. So the fact that this correct A1 XM16 E1 profile uh, has been retained is good. The selector here is fine, so that's nice. We have the correct uh, markings here and, and that looks quite good. 
the bolt hold open is, is quite nicely replicated. Whether I will remove these markings entirely or whether I might just see what they look like once it's been refinished, I don't know. The Armalite markings are, of course, completely uh, fake and made up. Uh, they aren't correct, but I quite like the look of them. So whether I'll keep them, obviously they aren't seen as often and they'll be a lot less garish once this has been oversprayed and refinished. Uh, they, you know, they are recessed in, but they're not heavily recessed in. So with a coat of paint, it'll take all this down and make it a bit less uh, garish, as I say. Uh, they aren't correct, but uh, they aren't terrible. I quite like the look of them, so I might keep them. I will try and amend this to XM16 E1. That will make it look a little bit nicer. Maybe remove the A and alter the, uh, the 5 to a 6, potentially with a stamp I have. Uh, and, and I have an X, I think, of the right sort of size as well, and try and amend that maybe. I don't know. I may well just end up removing these, uh, certainly removing this marking from the magwell, possibly leave this, maybe remove that. I will be leaving the, the safe semi and auto markings for the uh, selector there because they are correct, of course. So that's basically it on this side. The screw for the, uh, the back side is nice there. That's quite a nice, with the fact it's a, a slot head screw. Some electric airsoft guns use an Allen head screw for whatever reason. As you can see here, the pins are pins. They've been bashed in and out a bit by the previous owner, as you can see, uh, but they are pins rather than screws. Again, some electric airsoft guns use screws. So this has that advantage of having that slight, uh, slightly better accuracy in terms of using pins for disassembling this rather than screws. So that's nice. So overall, I think with a bit of work, this will be a fairly good uh, stand in for an XM16 E1 for reenacting purposes. Again, it's not going to be perfect, obviously, but it should be pretty good and as I say a much cheaper stand-in than buying a gas blowback rifle and it will look a lot better than it currently does uh, for use as an XM16 E1 and the particularly nice feature is that they they did quite nicely replicate Classic Army did quite nicely replicate the look of the lower receiver here with the partial fence up to the magazine release and the shape we have around here around the magazine well and the front of the trigger guard there so as I say, that is a feature that's nice to have and one of the things that's harder to replicate, harder to sort of reshape and everything where it isn't correct. You're buying, an X, uh, buying an M16A1 receiver with the fence around the magazine release and everything does require a lot of work with a Dremel to reshape all around here. So the fact that's correct on this is a good starting point. So there we are. We'll see you in part two for when I've done more work on this. Uh, I think I've run through everything here that I've done uh, to it so far. And as I say, we'll see the completed article or pretty much the completed article in part two at some point in the future when I get around to doing everything I want to do with this. So I hope you found it interesting looking at this. If you're interested to see how this looks in the future, do keep an eye out for part two. I can't guarantee when that will come out. Obviously, need to find time to actually do the modifications, carry out the modifications of this, which I want to uh, want to do. Uh, but hopefully by the end of all this, it should look a lot more like an actual XM16E1 and be a fairly good stand-in for reenacting purposes. Certainly better than it is now and uh, better than some of the attempts I've seen. Some of the other airsoft uh, options out there, electric airsoft guns that are modelled after the XM16E1 are really not very good. And a lot of them have the problem of having the A1 lower receiver, which is a dead giveaway with the, the fence around the magazine release. So. As I say, hopefully this will look pretty good once it's done and well, you can be the judge, you'll see in part two if you catch that. If you'd like to see that and other uploads going forward, please do make sure you've subscribed to the channel if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the notification button down below. That will of course alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And as always, a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It really is greatly appreciated, as I always say. Thank you all very much indeed. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you'd like to get in touch but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. That's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.